Hello there. We are going to work through, I'm going to show you how to work through um, this at home lab that you have this week. Okay. So I know when you look at it, it's like, what is this? It's a lot of um, stuff that might seem a little bit foreign to you. But if I work through it with you here, I think it will um, make a little bit more sense. So for this lab, we are looking at light waves and wave interference by using one of our FET simulations, our virtual simulation lab. There's gonna be a little link inside your participation quiz. You're gonna click on that link. It's gonna take you to exactly what I'm gonna show you here next. And I'm gonna work through all the lab parts piece by piece. So you can watch me, pause me, and then um, do the experiment on your own in order to answer these questions, okay? So let's go. All right, so you're gonna click that link and it's gonna take you to exactly this page right here, okay? Um, and so our first activity, we're gonna calculate the wavelength of light and we're gonna do it in two different ways, okay? And um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see this page right here and we're gonna click on the, link, on the little icon that says slits for this first activity, okay? So it's gonna bring you here. Um, this is a wave, experiment like water waves, but we want to think about light waves. So we're going to select here this little image that looks like a little laser pointer. We're going to select that that gives us our light source. Okay. And then we're going to select uh, not the graph. We're going to select this uh, button here that says screen. This gives us our screen at some distance away where we're going to project our diffraction pattern. Okay, so sort of trying to make it look 3D. So this is like kind of tilted at an angle. So you can think about it as being in a 3D space. So our waves are gonna come through here, diffract and produce our fringes here. And we're also gonna click the intensity graph. So we'll be able to see the intensity of those bright and dark fringes mapped out right here. Okay, and we're gonna move our slit to as close to this light generator source as possible. And as close as we can get it is this 500 nanometers away from our light generator. And so that's where we're gonna put it right here, okay? And then we're gonna, so right now we've got a single slit experiment. We wanna do a double slit experiment. I'm gonna come here and select two slits, okay? And for the instructions, we want 400 nanometers for the slit width I'm gonna move this until it says 400 nanometers. So that means each one of my slits is 400 nanometers across, okay? And then my separation of my slits, I'm gonna make it the maximum value here. So that's 3,200 nanometers, all right? You gotta leave the experiment in this way. We're gonna um, keep the experiment like this for the first activity, all right? So now we're ready to perform our experiment, okay? So now I'm gonna, that's all of us setting up our activity for the first part of our lab this week. Um, and then we're gonna to come to uh, select a color. Um, this is now I'm working through, but it's gonna say activity 1A, color one on your instructions. I'm gonna select kind of like this blue, bluey green color of light, I guess. And then I'm gonna click the button here to let my waves of light go, all right. So over here, these vertical waves, actually every here, every place you see, you know, bright light, that's a wave front. Remember wave fronts track the um, crest of our wave. So all these um, bright sort of arcs on this side are our wave fronts over here. We've got our plain wave fronts. The first thing we're gonna do is use the stopwatch to calculate the period of our wave. All right, so the period of our wave is gonna be um, how long it takes a wave front to pass any given point. Now I'm gonna bring, you can click up here, your stopwatch. I'm gonna bring the stopwatch over. You see it has units of FS, that's a femtosecond, okay. Femtoseconds are really short. One femtosecond is 10 to the minus 15 seconds. Right, so I'm actually gonna come down here where it says normal and slow. I'm gonna slow down time. 
my stopwatch will keep up with that time. When I click the slow down, my stopwatch will match it, okay? So to calculate the period of this sort of greeny light wave, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch this wave front. And I'm gonna watch this wave front. It's gonna pass the barrier, and then the next one's gonna pass the barrier. The period is gonna be the time it takes uh, for consecutive wave fronts to pass the same place. So I'm gonna watch to see, okay, this wave front just passes the barrier. How long until the next wave front passes the barrier? That's gonna give me the, um, the period of my wave. Then I take the inverse of that, that gives me the frequency of my wave. So let's do the period. As soon as my light wave front passes this barrier, I'm gonna click the stopwatch and as soon as the next wave front passes the barrier, I'm going to stop the stopwatch. So here we go. Okay, so it took 2.06 femtoseconds for consecutive wave fronts to pass this barrier. That's the period of my wave, 2.06 femtoseconds. 2.06 times 10 to the minus 15 seconds. To get the frequency of my wave, I take one Remember, frequency is one over the period. So to get the frequency, I take one divided by 2.06 times 10 to the minus 15 seconds to give me the frequency of my wave in Hertz. Then I can calculate the wavelength of my wave from that. Remember that the speed of light, three times 10 to the eight meters per second, equals the frequency of the light times the wavelength. If I solve that for the wavelength, the wavelength of my light equals the speed of light divided by my frequency. For this sort of greenish wavelength of light here, I'm going to do 1 divided by 2.06 times 10 to the minus 15 seconds. And that gives me a frequency on the order of 4.8 times 10 to the 14 hertz. That's a big frequency, but that's, that's a frequency in, in the visible spectrum. That's my frequency. So to get the wavelength of this light, I would take the speed of light and divide it by this frequency. That will give my wavelength of light in meters and I can put that into nanometers. And hopefully that number you get for nanometers is, um, is similar to the wavelength of light in the visible if you've done everything correctly. We're gonna consider that quantity that we just calculated in this way from the, free, the period of the wave, we're gonna consider that wavelength of light to be our um, true wavelength of light for this experiment, okay? Because you see here that my um, control panel is not telling me the wavelength, the exact wavelength or the exact frequency of this light. So I have to get at it from some other way. So we just got at it here by thinking about the period and then the frequency to get the wavelength of light. Okay, so that's part of um, this first activity. You have to find the period of the wave in seconds, the frequency of the wave in hertz, and then the what I'm gonna call the true wavelength or the actual wavelength of this light source um, by using that frequency and the speed of light to get at the wavelength. And then we're going to find it another way. The other way is by looking at our double slit fringes. Okay, we've got our beautiful um, diffraction pattern over here. This middle one, that's our central bright maxima. That's our central maxima for the diffraction pattern. You can get rid of this. Um, and so what we can do is we can measure this distance, I'm going to call it Y1, the distance between the central bright maxima and the first order bright maxima, and that's what I'm gonna call Y sub one. I'm gonna bring my ruler over here, and this ruler is a little bit um, complicated. So you have to grab it from the end here and swing it around so you can get this measurement. So now I'm gonna get the distance between the central bright maxima and my first order bright maxima. And here it's telling me that's 7.5 nanometers. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna call Y1 in the lab here. And you're gonna report that. And then I'm gonna find Y2. That's the distance between my central bright maxima 
and my second order bright fringe. And then here it's telling me that's like 100, uh, 1,600, 1,600 nanometers, okay? You're gonna use those distances, Y1 and Y2, from the central maxima to your first or second order bright fringe in order to calculate the wavelength of light. So I tell you um, in the, uh, the uh, participation um, instructions, what the equation is that relates this distance, Y1 or Y2, to the wavelength of light. We have to know the slit, the distance these two slits are away from each other, that's D, and that's the slit separa separation number down here, 3,200 nanometers. We also have to know the distance between the slit and my screen. And that's what we call X. Usually in the problems we're working in class or in lab, that distance is like on the order of a meter. But here it's much shorter than that. And again, this guy is a little bit hard. You have to grab the end here to measure. So now I can measure the distance X between my slits and my screen. Okay, that's the distance X. Then we have this equation, y is equal to m lambda x over d, little d, um, in order to figure out what the wavelength of light is for the source, you have to rearrange that equation for wavelength. Okay, that equation is given to you in the lab instructions. Solve that for wavelength. And we know the quantities for m, that's either one if you're looking at the first order, Two, if you're looking at the second order bright fringe, um, you've got your distance y1 between the central maxima and the first order bright fringe, y2 between the central maxima, the second order bright fringe, and then you've got your distance x here that we just measured, and then you have d, which is the spacing between your slits, which is fixed at 3,200 nanometers. So using that, you're gonna calculate what the wavelength of light of this source should be using both your measurements for Y1 and for Y2. And then you're gonna compare those to what you found um, for the wavelength of light just by using our stopwatch here and using the period of light. And so hopefully all those different ways we are using to figure out this wavelength of light gives us pretty close to the same number, right? So, so that's how we're, we're going to do this experiment, all right? Now be sure, so you watch this video, read the instructions, and if you need to watch the video again, be sure you do that too. You're gonna have to fill in a table with all of these quantities, the period of the wave, the frequency of the wave, the wavelength that you get from the period, the distance between the slit and the screen, Y1, the wavelength you get by making that measurement Y1, Y2, and the wavelength you get by making that measurement for Y2. And then we're doing this for one color. I've got my green color up here. You're gonna do this for another color, okay? So you're gonna repeat the experiment for a second color. Um, let's see, maybe I'm gonna choose, you could choose red. You're gonna wait for that pattern to reach over the, the screen over here so you can see those fringes. You're going to choose two colors that are pretty different from each other. So if one of the colors you choose is red, here's my fringe pattern starting to pop up. Then the other color you're going to want to use is maybe blue or purple, you know. So we want to spread out those um, measurements just so that we get some variety. So if you're going red and orange, we're not going to see a whole lot of difference between um, the wavelength of light that you get in your measurements for Y, okay? So um, you do, do this experiment once, you do the exact same thing when you pick a second color. For our second experiment, and for that one, we are going to go back to our um, home page for the wave interference um, menu of simulations, and we're gonna click diffraction over here. Here we have our circular aperture diffraction, which we've already learned about in class, uh, in the lecture. Um, we have our circular aperture right here. We've got our screen over here, all right? And so this panel right here is representing my circular aperture. This panel is gonna represent my screen onto which I have my diffraction pattern. 
And then up here is my laser. If I click the light, I'm gonna get um, my diffraction pattern, okay? Um, down here, we've got the eccentricity. The eccentricity is um, how stretched out is your circle? Zero eccentricity is a perfect circle. Um, an eccentricity bigger than that is more like an oval, okay? We're gonna leave it at zero. But you can play with this for yourself if you want to, but we're gonna leave it at zero for this um, lab, okay? And then we've got a bunch of different diffraction um, apertures you can choose. <laughs> There's a lot of crazy ones you can play with. Um, we're just gonna choose the circle with the eccentricity of zero. And there's a slider to change the diameter, okay? And so your activity is with this experiment just to play around with changing the diameter of the aperture and actually changing the wavelength of light. And you're gonna see how that modifies the width of your central bright maximum in this diffraction pattern. So the central bright maximum in our diffraction pattern is the width of this um, central bright um, circle here. The first ring, the first dark ring around it, that's your first order destructive minima. Then your next ring is your first order constructive maxima and so on. So the width of the central point is the width of your central maxima here in your diffraction pattern. That width for a circular aperture, uh, the width of that diffraction pattern central maxima for a circular aperture is equal to 2.44 times the wavelength of light. This time we tell you the wavelength of light times x, um, the distance between our aperture and our, um, and our screen where we have the pattern. We don't know what that number is for this experiment. And then we divide it by D, where D is the diameter of our aperture here. And so you're just gonna play around with this and you're gonna answer how does the width of the central maximum change as the slit width is varied or as the circular aperture is varied, the diameter of that circular aperture is varied. And how does the width of the central maximum change as the wavelength is varied? And you're gonna relate that back to the equation for our um, width of the central maximum.